I mean? So is it, it doesn't make sense. So as it relates to the cost of the bylaw officer, um, which is where we're at, right now we, we're at a position where we're going to talk with the RM going forward and maybe we can cost share this position. Um, as far as enforcing bylaws, it's my opinion, you either enforce them all or you enforce none. Uh, you have a problem downtown, there is no question we've got issues downtown, but you also have issues in the other ends of this community that are being ignored. There's some very, very bad neighbors at the south end of town, and that whole situation is being ignored, whereas the previous bylaw officer, I know for a fact, was trying to remedy some of that, because the south end of town is where my business is. I know what some of the problems are down there. And you're uptown, and you're at the school, and you're at the mill. So it's not just one area. Either you enforce them all or you force none. But I think, though, Herb, is a, and I agree, you have to enforce all the rules, but you have to pick the important ones first. Well, you're never going to hit them all at once. But Andre, if you live on Big Mill, I guarantee you there's some residents down there who are going to feel that those bylaws need to be enforced and, and because of the bad neighbor. And you're absolutely right. Well, we're talking about as if we've had a bylaw enforcement officer for the last 30 years. What was, what was the last no, time? we haven't. We haven't for about two years. Yeah, and when do we have oh. them before then? Um, we had for two years before then. This and that, and that, but what's that? We've had like sporadic but things. But that's so. the problem, and I'm yeah. not. And please don't dismiss that. I don't think it's important to have what you're talking about. Yeah. What I'm saying is, in our administrative, it's difficult for me to enforce a bylaw or to have Jen enforce a bylaw when we're going to nab you. But it's okay; they can do it over there because they're not important today. That's the only thing I'm saying. Because Jen didn't uh, buy that. Yes. Today or this yes. week. Yes. Yes. No, no, so I'm going to pick the guy it. that's going to complain. So all we're seeing is it's. Obviously, it's council's decision and your priorities, but what we're saying is we either enforce them all or we don't enforce them because you look like you're picking at people and then we end up in trouble. But you can't enforce them all. No. You can't get everybody awesome. all the time. You can only you get some can. of the people some of the time. It's. But you're not going to pick and choose I, I, some complaint is what we're getting at. We could talk about this forever. I'm, yeah. not ag I'm not against it, but I think that's like a year. And that's like okay. a year, a year maybe down the road. But, I mean, you guys decide. You guys, That's fine, you know, just as long as we have the support. Yeah. Just, 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 just so I can yeah. point something out, we were all elected to decide. It's not you guys decide, right. it's we decide. Well, but what, I, what I'm just, getting at... I just want to point that out. Yeah, but I, what I want to point out is that we've been talking about this for, I don't know, what, 20 minutes? So we know where I stand. And so in order to move on to an effort, another topic, it's good. so we need to decide what everyone's going to vote on. And where they want to go because already we're going to leave this and right, we're saying that we're going to meet with the RM to see if we can cost share. So I don't want to be sitting here in a month's time saying, okay, so we're going to cost share the project. Well, I didn't vote to cost share the project. I actually probably prefer us not to talk to the RM about cost sharing it because I don't really see that we should be cost sharing anything right now with due, due to by law enforcement officer. So that's why I'm saying you guys decide. You, this is my vote. I'm saying no. So then we're not going to move forward until everybody kind of says what they want to say, so, whether it's so, yes or no. So right now you're basically saying <clears throat> we shouldn't pursue discussions with the RM. Not, not if it's going to come back as, as a, I mean, we have a discussion, but if it's going to come back as, hey, guys, we decided that maybe it's going to be 30 or 40 or 50, what do you think? We kind of said yes, I guess we're, we're going that way. So I, I, I don't know what this meeting is, is, is going to all entail. It's a money issue for you? Is that what you're saying? Like you, you don't want to spend more than fifty a year on bylaw enforcement? No, I, I'm saying I don't know. I don't know what I want to spend on. I don't know. I don't know if I want to spend anything on it. That's right. Yeah, I don't know if I, if I want to because I, I have that that the downtown part and the other part I talked about already is more of a priority for me right now. Okay, All right, so I'm But that's just my opinion. So I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just confused. So, your we want to pursue bylaw enforcement. Yes. Is that yes? I'm sorry. Guys. Well, here's my opinion. So I'll just step back because I had actually thought that I was just bringing this forward as a discussion. We need to deal with what's happening downtown. That's kind of when we sat at all these public hearings and everybody asked us all the questions, we all had these things that we believed that that was an important thing we had to do and we had to deal with. The, uh, the street people, all this sort of stuff, beautification of downtown, make pride in the community. What I'm saying is that what I believe that we could do is scrap the, scrap the, the standard job description of a bylaw officer and can you combine something that 
yeah, they, they're going to work with the downtown people supporting the chaplaincy programs or whatever it happens to be and, and be an advocate with them. But in the interim, is there certain things that, if there's a bylaw that needs to be enforced, that this person can do that too? I don't know what the job description, how much time it takes for a bylaw officer. So I think as an open discussion, before we start digging in positions, what are we actually trying to accomplish? So there's two things. If you don't have a bylaw officer, then somebody should bring that forward, which I think maybe they are, and say, we need a bylaw officer and this is the reasons why. What I was bringing forward is I call it a bylaw officer by accident uh, okay. because I didn't know what the hell to call it. But we need to do something else as well. And I'm going to support that prior to I'll support a bylaw officer on its own. If somebody's got a good idea on how to do the bylaw officer and it makes sense for us, I'll support that, but I don't know enough about that. But I do know that we need to do something else. We're not changing anything downtown. And maybe it's a supported person or something. I don't even know what it looks like. So let's I, I, let's sit down and have that discussion on what that looks like without having to make a decision what it is. And maybe we end up in the same saying. spot. I just don't know how somebody would address, like, you're talking a little bit about street people too, right? Yeah. No, how do you address the street people or get somebody set up to address the street, pe street people if you can't? You have no repercussions for what they are doing. You I can't don't know. enforce anything on them. I don't know. That's why and I that's said what we I need understood to talk from the it. officer that was here the last time is he said that really there's nothing that can be done. I know. I don't know what we can do. But saying we can't do anything and then just accept what we got today then and yeah. let's stop talking about it. Or we say, hey, what can we do to try to help? Maybe Having a presence of somebody corralling people to a certain place for help, I don't know what the heck it looks like. I don't know what yeah. the skill level the person needs to have to do that. Is it a 40-hour a week job? If it's going to be Monday to Friday, 8 to 4.30, is isn't going to work. It's not going to work because everybody knows the schedule. They'll come out before 8.30. Well, whatever it happens to be. Uh, I mean, and it's not so much as trying to to corral that. people, it's saying, well, can we provide them support? Can we have a connection to their home communities? Maybe that's it. Hey, this guy's parking on the street here all the time, and I walk by there and I got a complaint. I'm going to go over there and deal with it. Okay, so what's our next steps? I, 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 I think our next much. step is anybody to go to this tour or to this educational thing. Okay. And, and, and see what can be done or can be done both ways. Leave it alone until everybody comes back and then sit down later. Because we've got a lot of other stuff that we have to deal with in, in between here. And I, I'm, I don't think we need a full, full uh, bylaw officer, and Andre has kind of explained that, but he kind of reworded that wrong, like the person. In the other respect, there's enough stuff going on around town that's not being looked after, and, it's, and it has to be looked after. So somehow in, in all this, we all have to put our heads together and come up with what Trevor's saying, what Andre's saying, what you're saying, what Randy's saying, and come down to a, a person or persons or whatever to do this. And I, I don't know how we're going to come to it because it's actually two different avenues. We've talked about this. We had a coalition. You're we not actually Andre. I'm not at a meeting, so I don't know what the coalition well, is. Well, because they just restarted it because oh. we handed it off to someone else. Oh, okay. So you're, I think that's I can't way. wait to the first meeting. I, I agree. Step one has to be either February 22nd or March the 1st, and you and Rod having your conversation at AMM as to what can actually happen, what can actually be enforced. Um, without knowing what we can and can't do, we're talking in circles. Yep. We've talked in the past about possibly the dog catcher. If he wasn't busy in his area that day, then maybe he could go over and he could do some of the bylaw. We're, we've, we've talked about it. 
And it, I'm glad that you brought it back up and that, no, you, that you want to have it on the table. My feelings are hurt now. But I, but I, I, don't I, want to talk about but about I feel more. until those courses on the 22nd and the 1st are taken, then it's just kind of, we're just going to keep talking and sorry. talking and talking until, like I'm doing But now. even maybe an earthbound on. patrol will alleviate some of this for us too. If they're going to be involved in the uptown area and the community, so, they can be these people along that are hanging outside the banks or hanging around whatever in large groups and dissipate them and get them to move on to somewhere else. Okay, so <clears throat> the, so what we're doing then is attending the workshops. Uh, we're going to talk to Rod, we're going to come back with all our information and we'll make an informed decision. <coughs> Can I ask one quote? Did anybody read through that mix of information about our enforcement and stuff? I read the job descriptions. Yeah, yeah. You, no, 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 not the job descriptions, the actual bylaws may hall a lot. Because I know, Jen, you had spent a lot of time, we spent a lot of time with the lawyers on it. That may help. The bylaw enforcement? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. So that just may give you a, a little bit of a perspective with that, too. So in your yeah. reading okay. travels. So we'll come back in March. So I had Andre, possibly Bill, Larry, possibly Trevor, mm -hmm. possibly Herb, to yeah. attend March 1st in Brandon. But also, too, like there's a whole bunch of us going to AMM, too. Mm -hmm. So you can talk to different communities what they do. They might have something there, too. Yeah. If the agenda the agenda's not been set yet. So you will let me know tomorrow so I can yeah. register people as soon as possible? Yeah. The first is one. Okay. We've yeah. done four. Do we need to talk about the enforceable bylaws tonight, or do you want to bring that back? Okay. I think that's what Brian was talking that's about. That's what I, yeah. Okay. And my apologies, that's where the confusion was, because it was, I was told to put bylaws on. That's what I thought we were looking at. I didn't realize we were looking at something different. Okay. Council review of facility tours. Um, are we going to do this tonight, or do we want to have a special meeting to discuss this? Special meeting to discuss it, special meeting, because mm -hmm. it's going to take like a while. To it's going to be Agreed. Okay. Can, <coughs> can we maybe come up with some of your, can people maybe come prepared? Um, yeah, yeah, as I had said before. With some of the issues. Email them to Randy, get them started. Uh, I thought when we, um, I thought when we, uh, talked about this though, that it wasn't us going to provide the, all the details that, the owners of those buildings or the department heads or whoever's responsible for a certain infrastructure would do their own inspections. It was, and yeah. But it is my understanding, Andre, that council was going to go through because they said it was a new set of eyes and it was going to be meshed with ours. Yeah, no, and I, and I agree, but you know what? I would like to see the old set of eyes first, personally. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's fair if council gets their list put together yeah. and have it for you when we have the meeting. Yeah. And then we can compare notes. Um, a meeting date. Uh, when's council in March? Fourth and second. Eleven and twenty-fifth. Yeah. Uh, well, how about Monday, March the fourth? I will have to double check on that with me, but okay. tentatively Monday, March the fourth. That's facilities, right? Yeah. At what time? At what time and where? Five in here? Yeah. Got another meeting that day. At that exact time. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll just have to figure it out. Yeah. Andre, community washrooms. Well, I'm afraid to bring it up now, but again, uh, I, just asking how to, I don't have the solution. I mean, uh, I know it's budget year uh, or budget time, uh, but you know we talk about the issues we have with visitors and street people and everybody else. And if you know, uh, or everybody should know, there's no place to actually use the washroom downtown. And my suggestion is, is should we be asking our engineering folks to come up with some options on how we could find the most suitable place for visitors and others to use the washrooms. Uh, you would think of building one? Is that what you're thinking? Building one, you can buy them. Mm -hmm. like you, can, you can buy a decent, like, 
nice buildings. They're, they're actual buildings. They're not just actual, yeah. but they're actual buildings. That can be plumbed in. My yeah. biggest thing would be location. Like, does the town own any property in the downtown that is usable? Uh, the Anuksha Park. That's true. <laughs> true. One place I never thought of. <laughs> That's true. Don't tell. I mean, it would be as good a place as any. So who would be responsible for cleaning it? The town? It'd have to be point operated. No. no. It can't be just open. No. It, it can't be just open. Why not? My hometown had one, and it was the worst wreck that you've ever seen in your life. It cannot be just straight open for everybody to walk in. It's impossible. Maybe it's impossible for somebody to come up with a point. Well, then it's unfortunate. But like, it, it would be, I'm not saying that it would become a hangout, but already at the Royal Bank and different places that are open, yeah. that are heated and stuff like that, they become a hangout place. And if you don't have somebody right there to, to police it or look after it, like it's a good thought, it's a good idea, but it would certainly have to be ran like... But if our shelter is open for certain periods of time where they have a washroom, and it's closed for certain period of times when so they have no access to washrooms, then why couldn't it be open when those times, like in opposite times? When it's needed. When it's needed. Would that not be usually late hours at night? No. No, the no. shelter's no. open at night. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just uh, an idea, but uh, maybe well, it, we it, can it's ask. A good, it's a good idea, but there's just so many, well, again, so we many can, things that... Well, we complain about people using the washrooms on the street. I know. And uh, and then we sit back and say we don't want to provide a washroom. And I know they're not allowed, some people are not allowed in certain businesses. And so I don't know what, what well, we're expecting. I, under, I understand all that, but it's just like our... Would it be possible to like build a washroom that's hooked up like a to the actual shelter itself that just gives you access to a door and a washroom? Yeah. Like yeah, probably. Yeah. Like, like, but just like enough no, to I get the toilet and yeah. the sink, yeah. and then that's it. So you can't camp out inside, like that kind of a. For sure, yeah, that's something that could be looked at. Yeah. Like, there's, there's a lot of different options and a lot of different ways of approaching this. Like, do you approach it from a tourism standpoint and and have it somewhere centrally located? So because there are a lot of things, where Trapper's Fest is being held right in the middle, exactly. right. Kitty corner to the lot that, that Herbert mentioned, um, and where are those people supposed to go to the lot? They're supposed to rely on businesses, to other downtown businesses, but hmm. you know the thing is, where though? Where? What business could you go? Well, that's just it. Giant Tiger. They, they they have a or miss the ball or whatever. Miss the ball or you know it is what it is. Like it's it's an issue that this town has a lack of um, public washing. So can I can we just make a suggestion? Have engineering look into some details and come up with some options for us. What they think? Do they have time right now? I don't know. I That's what I'm asking. Is the priority right now? Because we are on the budget, right? So maybe this is a budget item for 2019. Well, that's that's so who is it that we could get to look forward at it? <coughs> we'll we'll just move it to later on in the year after budget time and look at it, like you say for a capital project for. 2020 or whatever. Yeah, not, not to pull it on the homeless shelter, but I mean a lot of the clientele are yeah. using the shelter. Sure. They're, yeah. they're over in that area. Yeah. It would be hard to come up with a quote well, to, to see how much to put a washroom that we could access from the outside in. Just the just the small bathroom. Well, and then I guess the town would yeah. would cover up some funds to help Maybe. Yeah. You can so buy a modular office. Sorry, and I'm going to just, so is that the scope of just the homeless, or are we talking a community bathroom? Because there's a big difference here. Oh, for so sure. So I just would like that yeah. a little well, bit Well, I think clearer. it was brought up originally to help. It, public. Uh, it would have to like be public. But most yeah. people that yeah. were, most can't, people. You can't say this, who can't, can't. It's yeah, public. exactly. Public. It's a public washroom. It could be used for anybody, but who do you think is mostly going to use yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, the people that don't have access to a washroom. Yeah. yeah. Who could be people driving through town? No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's that's all I'm looking for is your scope. Yeah. 
people so, driving through town going to go to the homeless shelter and use it? No, probably no. not. But that's not, I think it's two well, different, two different, if, I, if, I'm going, yeah. if I'm going, yeah, if I'm going to the bathroom, 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 I'm going to go to Subway, well, I mean, if you really buy a sub, and watch if I got to use the bathroom, I don't run around looking for gas, yeah, 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 yeah. to see if they have a bathroom like that, I'll go spend a few dollars in a garage and use their washroom, or I'll go to a restaurant, sit down at a table, use their washroom, or I'll go and ask somebody politely to use their washroom, and most times they're not going to say no. It's if you come in drunk and disorderly, Guaranteed, 100%, no, you can't use my bathroom, it's for customers only. So is it fair to say the intent was to address the uh, homeless folks walking around? Yeah, yes. right? I think and so. There seems to be a suggestion that we should discuss this with the homeless shelter people? Yes. So you folks are active with the homeless shelter? Mm -hmm. So could you speak with them, Chad? For sure, yeah. Manitoba Housing owns the building that yeah. the homeless shelter operates out of. Um, the homeless shelter has access to, as of right now, the center portion of the building to be used as an emergency overnight shelter. Um, you know, it's something that can be brought Could you, could you sure. bring it up? Yeah. And, for, you know, we can't make plans for someone else. No, exactly. So if you want to ask them if they're interested in entertaining the idea, yeah. then we can And you know, uh, this is maybe in terms of downtown revitalization and destination marketing money and things like that. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if it... Uh, you know, takes away the fresh. Yeah. There's only a, what a five-hour gap from noon to five. What's that? Where there isn't. Where there isn't any <coughs> place available, noon to five. Basically, right? yeah, from from about nine thirty, uh, from eight eight in the morning till about nine thirty, there isn't access to a washroom anywhere, and then from eleven thirty <coughs> to one, there isn't. But after that, I thought I was looking for four hours. What's that? The soup no. kitchen, I thought that was like noon till, or pardon me, eight till noon. I thought that was. No, no. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So again, we've got a consensus. Yeah. We're yeah. going to have the talk to the homeless <coughs> people, see if there's a spot for this over there. That's, that's our direction. I'm not hearing a lot of yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Policy Can I just make, before we move on, just one thing? So, how do we put items on? The agenda for discussion only, though, and not that we require like a an actual action where we can just break away and say, "Okay, Herb's me and Herb are going to get together and <coughs> come up with some plan and some ideas." Or if or there's a committee established, yeah. you can have a committee. Report. Okay, so that's so the next time or we committee meeting. Yeah. Okay. Or you may want to establish like if it's a from oh, yeah, no, I just want to make sure up, you might want to on. establish a special committee. Okay. <laughs> But I still have to come back to community. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah, no, and again, that's yeah. all done. Yeah. Uh, policy for reporting on attendance at courses. Somebody brought this up. In I think it was you on, right? I think it was. On, okay, so. When people travel on courses. Oh, you, you wanted some reporting or something? Don't like you that? get a report on what people No, when we were saying what kind of expectations, because you guys had different ideas of what you've seen as an expectation. Well, I guess if you're investing money in somebody going away on a trip, so like, for example, I went away this last week, I created a trip report on what I actually did and some of the actions that are coming out of it and whether it's worthwhile to continue or not doing that. Uh, so I guess we invest in somebody going to a conference or a, I would expect that you have some sort of trip report. Yeah, like to the manager, not not to us. Like I just okay. I, I was only asking the question. No, what does the guy get out of it? No, and that's good. It was just so that we had a good direction of where this was going and what you were looking at. Because last time we kind of jumped all over it, and then everybody had different opinions. Because it was like, no, it comes to council, and I'd said too, well, they work for me, not for council. But I agree with yeah, you that I, you need to understand the value of it. So if somebody goes away, you spend I don't know how much it costs to go on a trip, but say it's three thousand dollars. Shouldn't you say, did, was that worth it? For sure. <laughs> yeah, because if it wasn't it worth it. Yeah. yeah. Just not we basically, yeah, we just basically report it, but we can do it formal reporting. We do it when we have our yeah, staff meetings, me. like before we have this meeting. But we can put it in a formal report. Okay. Perfect. Payroll and accounts, disbursement report. 
So we would require a resolution for pay period three in the amount of 102 581 28 and town checks number 22362 to 22430 in the amount of 807 156 71 and electronic fund transfer in the amount of 105 771 Some of the highlights that I'll just mention off the top were RCMP. Um, LaRose hold back of $84,000, and we have the subdivision on Patrick Avenue that was almost $7,000. So those are some of our ones that stand out a little more than normal. We would also require a resolution to accept the check number 22411 from Northern Building Supply. Subdivision on Patrick was split through or three Between ways. us yeah. and the two people that were purchasing the property. You probably remember that. It was a while back that we started this process. No, I remember the last one. It was uh, a subdivision on Patrick Avenue. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, so that's what that is. And then it says Town of the Paw, where there's a larger check for almost 10000 That's water billings that we put pay in our facilities, but also deductions from staff that pay their water bills through their payroll. So does it help when I tell you guys some of the bigger tickets, or? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Yeah. It's good to know. Who's Lori Cook? Cleaner. She's our cleaner. cleaner. Oh, cleaner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is everything um, settled with that and stuff? No? I think that would have been that's your last your one that was released. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was it. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing that's changed. Shouldn't be, because when I look in here, it's all the back. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So fingers crossed. Yeah, and the engineer signed off on mm -hmm. that. Right? What do you know with J.R. Cousins? Is there still work they're doing? Is there doing work? Yeah, yeah. Oh. probably would have been that one. That would have been part of that whole time. That whole yes. Thing. Any other questions on the checks? meeting with Christian Marois. He's coming to town. Yep. <laughs> He's an astronomer from the history. I'll go. Well, there's a lunch meeting. There's also a, um, there's a, a gymnasium from 6 to 8 on a lecture. <laughs> so do you want to do both the lecture and the lunch meeting or? Sign me up for both. Yeah. Okay. I will, uh, this is a good chance. I'll probably go to both as well. Really? Yeah, this is the stars, you know. Maybe not the stars all night. We leave a star after this. Is that what's going to happen? About stars? I thought it was something else. Maybe tell me my future? That's what I thought. That's an astrologer. Yeah, it's. Never mind. Pull up some. Some oh, cards there, Andre. I can read a future too. Of course. <laughs> I can. Don't laugh. <laughs> Brett, we're so much appreciate your patience. You're up. Oh. You're up for the next three. I'm going to call a contract on the first one. one. Yep. Okay. Oh, for sure. <laughs> uh, what do you guys want to tackle first, I guess, is my well, question lakefront for lots. you. Okay, lakefront lots. The bottom line is, do you guys want to amend your zoning bylaw, or do you not want to amend your zoning bylaw? Okay, so, Brett, um, Oh, the 100 feet, sorry. That's really know. what this whole issue boils down to with the lakefront lots. Um, okay. The 100 foot... Oh, sorry, Mary. Okay. Do you want to? I can just. No, oh, sorry. Uh, for sure. I'm not sure if everybody knows you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Oh, I guess that's right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just right here to tell you guys what to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah, I'm uh, the community planner for Northern Manitoba, and so my name is Brett Mack. I work with, you know, you guys, Snow Lake, the RM of Kelsey, Flint Lawn, Thompson, Churchill, you name it. You're based out of Thompson. Uh, based out of Winnipeg. We used to be based out of Thompson, but they uh, shifted the office down to Thompson. Okay. And so, what we're going to talk about, I guess, is the first issue will be the 33 lot subdivision that took place at Clearwater Lake. Um, 
the application commenced in 2009. One of the recommendations from conservation and water stewardship at the time was that a 100 foot setback from the high water mark on Clearwater Lake be implemented into the subdivision design in place of a public reserve, which would have been 15 meters plus another 15 meters of reserve um, mandated by the province, which would have been 30 meters either. So it was essentially a wash. So what council at the time chose was to go with adopting the recommendation from conservation and water stewardship that the 100 foot setback be implemented as a zoning bylaw. And so that was brought in. I'm going to say around 2010 or so as part of the conditional approval of that 33 lot subdivision. And so the, the main thing being with this setback is that there is no permanent development within that 100 foot setback between ordinary high water mark um, and the 100 foot level, or sorry, 100 foot mark up on your property. Um, there is allowed vegetation removal disturbance up to 25% within that width of your lot, but that's the maximum clearing you can do. Um, so that's kind of a quick rundown on the issue. And now what we're encountering, I guess, is that there's the possibility, possibility or the possible desire to amend that zoning bylaw um, and reducing that setback from 100 feet to 75 feet. Correct. Yep. And so, I don't know if you guys want to hear my opinion on it, or if you want, you know, like I'm, I'm kind of turning it over to you guys because essentially it's it's council's bylaw to amend as they see fit. Um, it's not controlled by the province in any way. We have no you know authority to tell you guys you can't attempt to amend your own municipal bylaw. What I can tell you is that there will be significant pushback from conservation, water stewardship, um, and even my department if an amendment was brought forward to reduce that setback. Um, I keep hearing a lot of existing development on Clearwater or Lake being thrown out as a precedent for why the new development should have no setback in place essentially um, or this setback shouldn't be existing. Well when the lots, and I'm only going to just call out Jen here because I'm the only person, or she's the only person I'm familiar with who has family that has a cabin on Clearwater Lake. And so how long? 30 years. Yeah. And so when the, the development where Jen's, I think it's your parents, right, have their cabin, when that was created, um, the setbacks that were in place were 15 feet, somewhere in that range, simply because 30 years ago we didn't know um, the level of damage we were doing to our lakes by clear cutting all vegetation right to the shoreline, putting in turf grass, and plopping your cabin right down on um, the lakefront. You know, we're seeing it everywhere with the water quality issues we're facing throughout our province right now. And so what has been done now is a, a blanket recommendation is applied to, to any new development. You guys haven't been singled out by, you know, conservation or water stewardship. Um, it's any new cottage lakefront development of this nature has that automatic 100 foot buffer being um, recommended by conservation and water stewardship. Um, it's there for very good reason. Um, you know, given everything we know about riparian health and lake quality and, you know, the, the draw of Clearwater Lake um, as one of, you know, the top, I can't remember what it was ranked, I was talking with, uh, with Mike Armstrong, he was conservation, and it was ranked one of the top five clear freshwater lakes in the world. And so, they're not taking things lightly in terms of it being protected. Now, 
maybe I'll ask you guys what the the desire is now to reduce that 100 foot buffer and take it down to 75 feet. Because if, if it's being done to accommodate the odd person that has already constructed out there and failed miserably in following proper construction practices and following proper bylaws in place, um, to me that's not a strong reason to change a bylaw. Um, is that, that is the issue though, right? So how many people do we have that have done that? Well, they're cleared though. And there's numerous cleared. lots that have been cleared that need to be yeah. reforested. Um, so, what are you saying then, Brett, that even if we asked for that uh, variance, that we wouldn't get any? Which, you're not asking for any variance. No. Like, you guys don't have to ask the province for anything. This, is, this is your municipal bylaw. No, but what is the pushback? You said you, we would get pushback from. Because Conservation and Water Stewardship is going to reiterate the same statements they gave when the subdivision came online, um, the same statements they have put together in advisory notes that have gone to the minister. Um, one of the main reasons that the 100 foot setback was put in place along the 33 lot development there, um, not that it's not applied everywhere else, but especially here, is given the conditions that that area of the lake experiences during storm surges, um, ice damming, property damage, erosion. Uh, this was all analyzed by conservation and water stewardship when the subdivision was put forward. And they make a recommendation based on the best interests of everyone. Mm. Yeah, I don't think any of that water land is low lying though. It's all got a pretty good slope to it. Well, that's a whole other reason why you don't want to shorten your buffer because the more sloped your land is, the greater your runoff speed is and the slower your retention of that water on site becomes. And given the, the shallow levels of topsoil here that are able to retain moisture, you're basically going to be sending runoff straight down to shield and into the lake. The, um, the issue of, like, as you pointed out with Jen, they've had the cabin for 30 years, right? And rules are rules. That's a valid point, right? But why is it that the province doesn't enforce new construction in that buffer zone? Because there are lots and lots of people who have built new sheds, new fish shacks, new decks. I can't speak. Well, fish, sorry, like fish sheds, decks, docks, that all has to be done through Crown Lands. Yeah, because you mentioned no development within 100 feet, and yet I know that people rebuild. Oh, and I would like to see the permits that these guys have taken out with Crown Lands, well, if that's mean, actually been done or not, because... Well, shouldn't you guys be enforcing your bylaws? I'm not Crown Lands. Oh, oh, oh I see. Okay. And that's not my bylaw, that's not even their bylaw to enforce. If somebody goes out there and builds a shed and Crown Lands doesn't know about it, how can they enforce it? More often than not, people aren't going to go to Crown Lands for a permit to put up a shed on their property. They're going to just do whatever <coughs> they want, which has already happened out in the 33 lot subdivision with one person doing as they please with building their, their residence not to code, not to existing bylaw, and this should come as no surprise to any property owner out there. When the lots were sold, a comprehensive package was put together and given to every person who purchased a lot out there saying that this 100 foot setback existed, <coughs> that no variances would be granted within that 100 foot setback. Um, it, was, it was clear as day to see everybody that was out there and to now be saying we weren't aware of this or we didn't know this happened, it's, it just doesn't jive. So at the end of the day, it's our decision? At the end of the day, it's your decision. Okay, cool. Any questions for Brett on this issue anymore? No? Well, what is the opinion here of council? Do you guys we're, feel that it's... I think what we're going to do, Brett, is take back and talk about it some more among ourselves. Mm -hmm. We appreciate your input. If you would, let's move on to 5.2. Which is? Closure of the walking paths. I'm going to declare, then I'll step over. Sure. You had something to say on this one? Or I was just asked to come and speak to the issue. I don't have anything to say other than... Okay, so we basically decided at our meeting we're going to meet with these people and we're going to... Yeah. Well, yeah. We didn't expect that to actually come up as a result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so then if you want me to say nothing to it, I is, won't. Is there some history, though, that you have that why were they put in there in the first place and what the needs and is the need still there? It wouldn't hurt. To They're put in there. <laughs> things like this are now a mandated aspect of every subdivision design in any urban area in the province. So if you guys were to come in with a new 40 lot subdivision design and create a new, you know, little enclave somewhere, whatever, we'll say right over in behind here. We'd want to see some sort of connection into here. We'd want to see some sort of connection into here because the nature of design is not so much focused anymore on being completely centered around the car. And as the one person or delegate who came and spoke, it's quite nice to have infrastructure that isn't entirely devoted to moving automobiles. Um, by shutting down these walkways, it's essentially counterproductive and counterintuitive to common subdivision design practices. Those would have put, been put there simply to create connections to the outlying areas. But is it, I mean, I know what you're saying, but I mean, in the, some of the history I heard was that there was a school, someone brought it up yeah. as well there, but I've heard before, there was supposed to be a school there where the Cudmore and other areas where that's where they put the two paths. So, I mean, if, if that didn't develop and something else came, then, you, you know, now to have more yeah, access. But other stuff has come because now UCN is there, the wellness center is there, there is two schools just up the road further there that closing these two, when you look at it, if you go on Google Earth, you can see that you can make your way all the way from down here, currently, up into UCN is where, right in here? Somebody with a little more familiarity want to yeah. guide me, is it up in here, in here, wherever. Yeah. You can go all the way from down here to UCN, to Margaret Barber, to the Wellness Center without having to essentially put your health, or your health, yourself in any high traffic areas where there is heavy vehicular use as the people were mentioning along Cathedral Street where your speed limits are not monitored, people are driving, like, whatever. And so by s closing those walkways currently where they are, what you're going to do is sever these connections right in the middle. Um, if you want to speak to the vandalism and the graffiti aspect and the, the criminal element, um, that falls on a combination of the town and the residents. I, I was kind of shocked when the one person said, you know, in the summer we have these trees that grow over and create a lovely canopy. Well, then that falls on the resident because they're creating this unsafe space. If they want safety in the space adjacent to their house, you as the property owner are then responsible for taking measures within your control to create that safe environment in partnership with the town. And where the town's responsibility would come in would be ensuring that lighting is working consistently on both ends of those pathways, whether garbage is picked up on some sort of a regular schedule, you know, and people keep talking about the bear clan coming and patrols will be walking these walkways. The thing is, once they're closed, they don't come back. Like, there's no doing a, a one-year trial run, closing this path down and then bringing it back. Um, I'll use... Sorry, I was just on Google Earth. Like this one right here, this is the pathway that leads to the park. This would be pathway A, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. And so if we want to close this pathway down, it's not just putting up a little fence here and saying this pathway is closed. Or building a cross fence to join up if there's any connecting fences there and leaving the space in behind. Because then you're just creating more issues. What happens is a public Sorry, it's been a long day. Um, a public reserve closing bylaw has to be brought forth by, you know, the adjacent property owners. So they're going to have to pay for a survey for that. They will then have to have a subdivision application that decides how this will be split up. They will then need to remove the cement that is there in place. Um, I was talking with Sam and he says there's been a fence that's been built up to this line now. So this property owner would have to remove the back of their fence and either A, purchase the entirety of this pathway, enclose it within their yard, or split the other half with the person on the other side of their property. It's not just as simple as, as slapping up a barrier and saying this pathway is closed, because all that does is 
invite more vagrancy. Um, all you're doing is, it, it was true, it was called a band-aid solution to call or to, to close these pathways. That's all it is. There's, you're not addressing anything by closing it. You're shifting things to the, uh, <coughs> I guess, the walkway along here, which I myself wouldn't take, you know, besides from the daytime. I wouldn't have my children walking along there um, during periods of night. Or... Cathedral Avenue, which has highly unregulated traffic, or down back alleys where there's less lighting, less eyes on the street, um, and all that more chance of vandalism, given the fact that there's what, how many garages back there, an opportunity to enter into people's backyards, right? So, closing public walkways does not solve problems of, of vandalism or vagrancy or, or property degradation, all it does is shift it to other areas that will then experience it. And like they said, are you going to close down the laneway next? Are you going to start to close down laneways in the downtown because during the daytime they're populated by people who have social issues, right? Like you can't close away or, or legislate social problems out of existence. And so closing a walkway is not going to change anything. You've been around a lot of communities. I'm sure you've been around a lot of communities that have been trying to close laneways, or public access walkways. Nope, you no, haven't. No, like I said, they're now seen as as vital links in, in modern subdivision design. So. But, but I guess, I mean, I don't know how much you've looked at. Like, some of these pathways, in, in my mind, are, I mean, I know, what well, maybe some people think if you close one, you got to close them all. But some of them, to me, don't very, like, that one there is, like, you have to go into a cul-de-sac to go to it. But you could go two houses over and down from the length of the room down Cathedral and you're at the park. Oh no, and I said to say, like, in discussion yeah. with Sam, I said if any pathway was going to be considered for closure in all of this, it would be this one, because it, yeah. it's redundant. Yeah, but, but even, like, and I, I mean, I do those paths all the time. We go down Traeger, and I can, and actually my kids did it, they said, Dad, we want to go down this one. So I can wave at my kids, and they're on the one path on Traeger, and I'm on the other, and I'm kind of like, why are there two paths on the same street? What, what's, what's the... They're literally seven... They're, yeah, like, down, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're not yeah. having yeah. two. So it's it's not like there's you know five hundred people living on on Traeger. There's and again, I mean I'm no, not saying not I'm not saying quantity I'm of use. It's about direction. One's going to spit you out towards UCN. One's going to send no, you towards one's, downtown. One's going to spit me out seven houses down. Is that? It's it's that's that's is what it is. It's not like it's giving me any more advantage. Just like this one. So do I go down? to the cul-de-sac, or do I cut over four houses and down? Like, I, I, I don't know, and I'm not saying I'm again, I, I want to go close, close, I'm just being devil's advocate, because I, I actually take usually the, the route to go the other way, because it does look like, and you said it's the responsibility of, of, the, uh, of the homeowner, after a while, I mean... No, I said it's the responsibility of the homeowner and, and the town to come up with a joint solution. But after a while, people get frustrated when their houses or their or their, their fence get spray painted. Oh, and I get so. that, but I mean, if you as a homeowner are proud of creating undesirable conditions next door to you, oh, I, I, I'm just essentially I'm just, invite in this this element that you want to get rid of, it makes no sense to me in that but, way. But I guess the hard hard part I, I have understanding is if it's for, if there were a lot of usage for that one, that say, you know, pick on this one, I'd say, wow, you know, it's just, we got to fix this problem because there's all these people going through this area and, you know, it's not... But it's not really used that much. It's very, it's, it's, it, to me, it's like I go down there, like, there's a path here? Why? I can oh, just I, go I right heard around. more evidence of usage today from the, the yes side than I heard <laughs> from the, the close yeah. side. I mean, but in perspective, we had 16 people here. I mean, that's great, but I mean, 16 people over 5,000 But I mean, 5, extrapolate, people. right? If you get four people that are against an issue and... 12 that are for keeping them open, and you begin to extrapolate numbers. It only makes sense. When you look at every correspondence that's ever been sent to the town, it's always the same 
key people pushing this issue forward. It's, it hasn't become strong enough to become a neighborhood issue. And that's because there's clearly more people here who see value in the walking paths than they do seeing them being closed. Because after nine years, you would expect if this issue was as dire as it's made out to be by certain aspects of that delegation, that they would have attracted much greater following to this position of these need to be closed for the safety of kids in the neighborhood, where when it's continually the same people over and over pushing the issue. And I get it, they live adjacent to it. So, you know, but the, the will of four houses shouldn't trump the, the good of, you know, the south, south half of residential area in your town. Well, this is coming back on the agenda. So yeah, sure. yeah. That's it. Thing tonight, they talk about cameras. We can't legally put cameras up, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Sure, you can. We can? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys, and you can get ones that don't even need to be on a loop continuously recording. They're triggered by people that walk the path. They snap a picture of the people that are there. That's it. Yeah, oh, yeah. So it's all about visibility, and I mean, the town should then be encouraging this lady who's happy about her trees growing over and creating this little spot in there to, to cut her trees back to create clear sight lines through here and then the town should be putting in white metal halide bulbs at each end of the walkway right like these are not expensive solutions because the lights already exist in place right so let's let's up the quality of lighting let's work with adjacent residents to ensure that their property is a secure but also b um, maintained in such a way that it doesn't invite these areas to be created essentially right and so it, it comes down to a joint solution but you know in my opinion closing all three of them is not um, the be all end all and it won't ultimately solve the problem Okay, well, so it's coming back on the agenda. So let's talk about tax increment finance. What do you guys want to know? Uh, <laughs> Andre. 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 I mean, like. Don't leave. Rick, I understand there's been some new guidelines and stuff. We want to see as a community how we could utilize this. Um, this is just some information here. It was a slideshow. I was going to give it to you guys, but that's boring. Um, so we'll just pass it around. And I mean,. Make sure everybody gets something good. Yeah. 